Although my art is fairly good, my video skill is far from the most technologically advanced. So bear with me please and thank you in advance. MS Paint, Pixel Art, Wall Art Prints, and Coloring Pages. I designed my method with wall art in mind. I wanted to be able to change it to match the colors I needed. Unable to find any reasonably priced art with a simple program, something you wouldn't need a college education to use, I created my own and decided to put it out for availability, along with coloring pages for kids and adults. This video was made to show you how to use MS Paint to color my art and more importantly how to change the current color to suit your needs. Now, as you can see the slideshow that's going on before you, each one of these pictures, they're the very same art piece. This art print is the same as this art print. This art print is the same as the this art print and this art print. What you are able to do with my art prints is you are able to change the colors to match the room that the art is in. Let me escape this and show you. Now this print right here, you are able to use MS Paint to change the colors and match any of the colors in your room such as you see all the blues in this room you're able to make a lot of blues in here by just opening the um, MS paint program and open it with this piece and just change the colors same thing here you want to match the gold pillow right along with the blacks and whites that are in the room and you're able to match those colors with this one and this one is the same art print as this one same thing here that's the same art print as this art print right here. What you're able to do is to change the colors in the art print using the MS Paint program to match whatever color room that you have. Let's get into the video and show you how this works. I am the one RJ1 and welcome to my channel. You can color my art with MS Paint, a free paint program that comes with the Windows program. It is called Pixel Art. It is a digital art and made up of tiny pixels of color that you can color any color you like. Let's color a picture and show you how it works and then we can get into a more in-depth picture to show you how this fully works. So let's go and open up the very, very simple ones. Let's open up this one. Right click on this, open it up with paint, not the paint 3D program, but open it up with paint. Now this one is really simple. So you're ready to put this one on your wall it's already showing that it is a desert scene, but let's say that you wanted to change this scene to match the colors in your room or match a theme that may be in your room. Let's say you wanted to show something such as a, let's say um, um, a green mountain hillside by the shore somewhere, which would contrast to this desert area. All you have to do is basically go up here, find the colors that you need, or use the edit color to create. But right now we have the color, for this one we have the colors that we need up here in the palette. We don't really have to create anything. So you're gonna click on the sky blue color, color the sky. Go up here and pick this lime green to color the hillside. And choose the darker green to color the shadows on the hillside. And you can just change it just that quick. And all you have to do is, when you close it, click save and that'll be it. But I'm not going to save this. Click don't save. Let's go out. Now I'm going to choose this one here. We're going to open this up. Open with paint. Use the magnifier. 
bring this back down as you can see this has certain colors into it but let's say you wanted to give it a brighter more vibrant color something to try to match the room that you're in or match the art decor that you may currently have so i take this color that's right here and i'm going to change it i want to give this one sky blue color these leaves are kind of dark it's kind of a dark plant so i'm going to brighten them up a little bit just pick this lime green color the light areas all you have to do is just click click and pretty much use the paint can to just color the entire area and find the darker green here color the darker side with that one And as you can see, it's, it's just that quick, just that fast. Now what I want to do is I'm going to save this one. But you want to save as. Now I'm going to save this as like 002. Let me get into the file so I can show you how I would save this file. Now you have wall art. 001. That's basically, I'm going to give it a generic name. And what you want to do is go down here and click on this and change this to 002 and save. Any transparency will be lost if you save this picture. All that is, is this is a PNG image and all of the white background here, it is transparent while you're doing the picture. Now, all you have to do is just click OK, and this right here will be white instead of transparent. As you practice coloring, you'll more so understand how this works the more you practice coloring. Click OK and close it. And now let's show this. This is how the original look, and this is what I changed it to. The original and what I changed it to. Just that fast, just that easy. Now let's go back out. Let's see, now I have, uh, let's go to the tele. To, well, basically, these two wall art print arts, basically for adults, you want to print them up in a room, put them, put them up, hang them up on the wall. But let's say that you just want to color something like a regular teddy bear like a toy or something. Hopefully I can get more of these files available. Right now this is the only one I have. So this one is a plain one. It has plain simple colors. This one has shadow colors. If you want to get to and get into a more in-depth kind of coloring, we'll say basically it's kind of sort of like an advanced coloring. Not only are you going to be able to color this shirt, but you'll want to color the shadows in. And you're going to learn how to use MS Paint to do that. Now, what I would like to do is right here, you can see I have this t-shirt. And he has a blue shirt on, on the t-shirt. And what I want to do is to be able to create an iron arm where I can match it to these shoes. And that way I would have a picture on my shirt with that sky blue color in it that would match these shoes. And I would be able to take this teddy bear here, open it up with MS Paint, change the color of this shirt to match the shoes that I have. I'm going to open this up and show you exactly how I do that. I'm going to right click on the file, go down to open with paint. Magnifier, zoom out. Now I could go up here and find one of these colors and try to match the shoe color. But there's another method that you can use to get a more exact color that you're trying to look for. And what you want to do is you're going to see this little block that's going to be on the right side of the picture. Just move this up and down until you see the arrow pop up. Left click on the mouse and hold and pull this to the right. 
it will increase the size of the work area. Now I'm going to click undo and put it back to where it was. Now down the bottom you see there's 2400 by 3000 pixels. That's the same as 8 by 10. But the 2400 is really important because what we want to do, we want to put this picture back to 2400. But as we stretch this out, that 2400 can go as far as, let's say I move it all the way back out to 6,000 pixels. Now we have an extra workspace. I'm going to show you why I did that. Now let's reduce this down. And I want to open this shoe up with paint. Now go up here and use the select tool. Now select the entire area of the shoe. Now as I select the entire area of the shoe, I look down here and I see my numbers. This is 1100 by 560, but the size that I stretched around the shoe, let's go up here and undo this again so I can show you how this works. Now this is the entire size of the Emerson, 1300 by 800 basically. Now I'm gonna use the select tool to select a certain area that is 1,000 by 500. Now I'm going to reduce, well, let's go down here to this. It'll show both of these and go back to the teddy bear. Now you see the teddy bear space is 6,000 by 3,000 pixels. Now the selection I have for the shoe is only 1,000 by 565. So I know this will fit in with the teddy bear picture. So what I want to do is go up here and click copy, which I'm copying the area that I selected. Then I'm going to close this. Don't save. Now I'm back on the teddy bear. I want to go up here and hit paste. As you can see, it took up a small amount of space. Put the shoe over to the right side here. Now go up here and pick the paint can. Then go and pick the color picker. Now go over here and pick the blue color that's in the shoe itself. As you can see, it popped up on the color one. Go over here and click the shirt. Now I just made the shirt the very same color as the shoe. So now I want to put the picture back to the original size. So go over here to the right and find that little block. Left click and hold and drag this back over to that 2400 that I had. That's going to take a little finessing. There we go. Now it's back to 2400 by 3000 pixels. Now what I want to do with this file here, I want to save. I'm going to go to save as, never click save, you want to save as. But when you choose save as, that means you want to save this as an entirely new file. Now I'm going back to the teddy bear folder. There it is. Now you can see I have teddy 001, teddy 002. I'm going to make this one three. And I'm going to save. And close it. Now that I have the color that I want, all I would have to do is print this out on uh, iron on transfer paper and pretty much just iron it onto the t-shirt. And this is what I would have when I'm finished. As you can see, the coloring is very, very simple. It's not that complicated. It's very easy to use. The main thing I wanted to be able to do is I wanted to make it so that you would be able to color your pictures without a whole lot of extra hassle trying to figure out how to match this color to this color and trying to find the right picture. Maybe you found the right picture. You just want to be able to color it. 
And that's what my art is designed to do so that you would be able to exactly do that. Like these pictures here, what you would actually be able to do is you would be able to take any of these images, change it to the color that you needed to be to fit the room or decor or t-shirt or whatever project it is you're trying to do, you would actually be able to match that color. Okay, now we're going to get into a little more in-depth coloring. Let's go and open up the social light folder. Now here, when you download the folder that you're going to get, what you will wind up getting is something like this. Open it up. Now under this folder, the social light folder that I have that I'm going to make available, you will have four different versions. This one is going to be the black and white version this is the one that you will be able to just print out and let's say use crayons coloring pencils uh, watercolors whichever one you want to try to use in order to color it but this will be designed so that you can just print it out with a printer and just start coloring this one is a more in-depth color It's full of shadows that I added in here and it has shadows under the hat. It's a little more vibrant. Now this one here is plain if you want that version versus having the one with the shadows to it. Sometimes some people want that art to be just a little more plain and not so in depth. That's what this would be. Now this one has, this one here has absolutely no black lines around it and it is plain flat color and that will be the last one so what you're actually getting is this right here the black and white line art that you have now this one you can color it with the MS paint if you chose to but I just went ahead and took out all the colors just in case you just wanted to print it out Now this one is also line art but it has the color in it so you just open it up with MS paint and just start coloring same thing here, just open up MS Paint Store Coloring, but this one has the line art. And lastly, this last one, it has no line art itself, but you can still color it just the same as you color the other ones. The only thing is, this is the one that you would have in case you decide that you just didn't want any black line art around it. Now what we want to be able to do is to take uh, one of these images and be able to match it up with this couch so we can put it replace one of these what I'm going to do is I want to replace this one and I want to put it in this room but I want to match the colors of the picture to this couch now when you first get your folder the first thing that I would like for you to do is to create a copy. This folder here is going to be a master copy folder. Just in case you happen to make a mistake and delete something or something goes wrong with this folder, you will have the original folder as a backup copy. So what you're going to do is basically once you download it and place it in the pictures file, you're going to right click, go down to where it says copy and then you're going to right click again out in the middle of the page and click paste and as you can see it's going to create a copy of the folder now what you want to do is take the original folder click on it once wait a second click on it again and this option will come up again now click all the way to the right now what you want to tap type in along with this is you want to add master copy now this master copy folder you will not be using this folder at all you're only going to go and use this folder in case something happens to this copy folder so now the master copy is to be left alone. Remember, do not mess with this folder at all. Keep everything in here as it is. And you want to work 
from the copy folder. That way, in case you mess any of this up, delete it, or something happens to it, you don't have to worry about it. You can go back to the master copy folder and you can get another copy of this folder and just keep working from a copy instead of working from the original. Because if you're working from the original, you take a chance of losing all of your data in case something goes wrong. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna work from this master copy. Open up the master copy and we're gonna open up this file here. Right click, open, paint, magnify, right click to zoom out, left click to zoom in. Now what I wanna do is the same thing I did with the teddy bear. I want to be able to color match to the room that I'm trying to go in. So I'm looking at this. It's 2400 by 3000 pixels. Now let's reduce this down. And let's go back out. And what I want to do is I want to open this up with paint. Now this seems to be a rather large file. Let's right click it, bring it down to size. This is 3300 by 3000 pixels. Now what I want to do is I want to select a small area of this room. I want to just select a small area enough to fit in to the picture that I'm trying to make. So what I'm going to do is pick select just picked a little bit of the wall, some of the pillows, and the couch, and some of the table. And I can see this is 481 by 1700. That is small enough that I know that it will fit in to the other picture that I'm working on. So I click copy. Then I'm going to close this and don't save. Now I'm going to bring this one back up going to do the same thing that I did with the teddy bear find that little block left click on the mouse and hold and drag this image out then I'm going to click paste now I'm going to grab this and slide it all the way to the right now I have colors that I want to work for from now all I have to do is go over here, pick the can, color picker, click on the couch. Now I have the color that's matching the couch up in color one. Go over here and click on her outfit and change those colors. Now I wanna add some shadow in these shadow areas. Now I can use the edit tool to make it darker or I can color pick a darker area up here but I want to show you how to take the color that you currently have make it just a little bit darker to create this shadow go and click on edit colors and over here on the right side this is the illumination tool right here make it just a little bit darker than the color that you have click OK and go click on the shadow areas and see this up. But is that dark enough? And I'm thinking I want to make it just a little bit darker. So go back to edit colors and take this illumination of 80. Take it down to maybe 60. Click OK. Okay, that's a better color shadow I like. Now right here, you can see the shadows here. I'm gonna click on those and click on this one. Now this pink area, I'm gonna match that with the table. So go back to the color picker, go over here and pick this color in the table and just go and click the pink area. Now as we see this colors that we have in here right now this will match the colors that are in the room now since I have the person here let's say if I want to I can change the skin color and change the hair color while I'm here so let's go ahead and try and do that I'm gonna take the skin color 
take the color picker click on the skin color go up here edit colors now the illumination is 50 I'm gonna take it up to 200 and click OK I'm gonna go ahead and click in the skin areas now all I have to do is go back to the edit colors and darken it up from that 200 take it down to 150 click OK and click into the shadow areas I change the skin color just that easily now let's say I want to give her a brown tone color hair so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go to create this color from scratch let's go up here and just go and click on edit colors from the color that I'm working with now now I'm going to move this around to find the color that I want to get Let's see, gotta make our hair brown, brownish color, move this closer to the reds, darken it up some, give her maybe a dark brown kind of color hair, maybe about 60 illumination, and click OK. Click on this part and this part of the hair. Now you can see the shadow that's under the hat. I need to make that just a little bit darker. So I click on the edit colors. Take this illumination here. Take it down to 30. Click OK. Now I believe that we have the image that we're looking for. I like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this image. And I'm going to put this back over to the 2400 take this all the way back over until I see 2400 all of my pictures are 2400 by 3000 I'll show you how to change the size when I get finished with the picture Okay, it is back down to 2400 by 3000 pixels. Now what you want to do is go up and click on and click save as. Click on the file, click save as. Go and find the socialite folder. Because I always like to save everything in the same folders. Now remember the master copy, don't do anything with the master copy. Save it in the copy that you are working from. Now as you can see, I have this with Socialite PNG Line Art Color Shadow. I put the shadow there because these have the shadows in it. This one has just Line Art Color, but it has no shadows, so I don't have the shadow here. This one is Line Less. And this one is black and white. Now what I want to do is I want to create the shadow 002. I already have 001. I want to create 002. So go down here click on this. And put a 2 there. And click save. Transparency just click OK. close it out or we'll check the folder now this is what I have right here now if you would like to see how I could put this in that room I'm gonna show you how I can I could just make a mock-up real quick using Windows paint I'm gonna right click on this open it up with paint Reduce this down using the magnifier, right click, 
Now take the select tool, put it into the frame here, and drag it from the top left down to the bottom right. Now that tells me down here the exact size of that frame area is 541 by 1700. So what I want to make sure is the picture is somewhere around 530 by 700. So 541 by 717, I want to put it at least 5 to 10 less on each one of the numbers. So I'm going to try to get an area of between maybe 530 to let's say 710. Now I'm going to reduce this down open up this one open up this one with paint magnifier put this back down and take the select select the entire picture now you have to remember that area that I had to put it in Let's go back and look at that. That area is 541 by 717. So we're going to try to get it reduced down to about between 530 to maybe 710. So let's go back to that image. 530 to 710. I have the select area. Now once you select around this area, I can reduce this down to a certain size. Now what I'm going to do is try to move it till I can see that 530. Or close to it. It's kind of a finessing kind of thing. That 530 to that 715. Well I got 532, 716, close enough. Let it go. Now I'm going to click copy. Then I'm going to close this and don't save. Now while I'm here, I want to click paste. And as you can see, now all I have to do is stretch it a little bit to fit it inside this frame. Okay, now you can see that I created this. Now the colors that are in this picture match the colors that are in this room. It's just that easy to be able to do that with the colors and make the colors and change the colors. It's very, very, very simple. All you have to do is just watch this video, study it a few times, and practice with the paint program, and it'll be just as easy to do. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this, and I'm not going to save it. Now what I want to do is to show you how to resize each one of these pictures. Let me double click on this sheet right here. This sheet serves a specific purpose. Now none of my pictures can be reduced below 8 by 10 because it is pixel art paint. The pixels, I'm not trying to get too technical about it. I try to make it simple as possible. Just say that the pixels will be moved out of place and it will distort the picture if you try to reduce it below 8 by 10. But you can enlarge it all the way up to 32 by 40 or let's say 400% of the original picture. 8 by 10 would be at 100%. 32 by 40 would be up to 40, 400%. And this sheet will be included with the whatever pictures that I send out. This will be included in that picture. Now what you want to do is take this original alpha design sheet right here. That I specifically have this sheet design. It's already under 300 dpi. And it's already 2400 by 3000. You can increase the size of this sheet to whatever size you need it to be. Now I'm going to open this up with paint.
use the magnifier, bring this all the way down. Now up here where you see it says resize. Click on resize. Now you can use a percentage or you can try the pixels. The easiest thing to do is to use a percentage. Let me click cancel so you can see these numbers that I haven't. There's a reason why I put these numbers on the sheet so that you would know what you can do. If you wanted to choose the pixels, just put these pixels numbers in to put whatever size sheet that you want. Let's say 7200 by 9000 would be a 24 by 30 inch sheet. You would be able to take that 8 by 10 and just click on it and change it from 100% to 300%. And that will put you at 24 by 30 at 300%, 7200 by 9000 pixels. So let's say what I want to do with this sheet here, I will go and click on resize. And if I put this at 300%, maintain the aspect ratio, keep that mark checked. So like when I change this to 300%, this will automatically change to 300% as well. And click OK. Now that just increased the sheet. Now let's go click on resize. Click on the pixels. You see 7200 by 9000. And all you would have to do is click OK. But before you do that, let's click cancel. And click undo. That's going to put the sheet back down to an 8 by 10. Now you see that you want to put this up to a 24 by 30. And we're going to put it at 300%. Take the select. Select this. Oh, I'm not, I didn't click. I, I still got it on the pencil. Let me click undo. Click on the select area. Select this entire area where you see the numbers are at. Grab this and take it fully off the screen. Now what you want to do is reduce this down. Go and open up this image here. Right click on it. Click open with paint. Magnify, reduce this down. Take the select tool, click on that. Select the entire image. And click copy. Now close the image up. Don't save it. Don't do anything. Just close it up. Now open the other one back up. Now what you want to do is take this image. After you move the numbers off of the screen, you want to go and click on resize. Remember now it's at 2400 by 3000, which is 8 by 10. Increase that percentage to whatever number you want it to be. But right then we said we wanted to increase it by 30, by 300 percent. Increase this to 300 percent, and click OK. Use the magnifier to zoom out. Now, with my screen, this is as far as going to as it's going to zoom out. So I can't get the entire picture in here. So that's going to cause a problem when you click paste and paste that picture in here. Now watch when I click on paste. Now this is the size of the image compared to the sheet. Remember you cannot stretch this smaller into let's say you want to put on a 5 by 7 sheet but you can increase the size. Now all you have to do is move this out into the sheet slightly like this and just start stretching the picture. Those little dots on the side, they allow you to grab them the same way I showed you how to increase the sheet. Stretch them out to the edges. Now, stretch them down. Sometimes this is going to take a little bit of practice. You're going to have to do this more than once to get this down. And stretch it down to the bottom as far as you can go. And stop. Use the scroll on your mouse and scroll down. Now go back to that box 
and stretch it down further. Now scroll it back up. You can see it'll do this sometimes. That's why I said it takes a little bit of practice. Go back up to the top, grab that little box and pull this back up. Now what you want to do is go around the edges and place this where you want to place it, how close to the edge you want to place it. Now use the scroll up and down to check to see this is exactly what you want. Okay, this is exactly what I want. That's the size I want. And I have just resized this. Click on resize. Oh, I forgot, click cancel. It's showing me the area that I still have under the select. So what I'm gonna do is just click outside of the picture to make that select go away. As you see, the select part went away. Now let's go back and look up look at resize it's going to show me the size of the entire picture 7200 by 9000 okay now let me reduce this down so you can see this once again 7200 by 9000 at 300 percent is a 24 by 30 inch picture so I just increased it from 8 by 10 to 24 by 30 if that's the size that I want to print it out that's how I would increase the size and the, the size of the file will be set up so that you can print it out as a, as a 24 by 30 like I said it's not really hard to do it's just this takes just a little bit of practice but once you learn how to do it there are going to be so many ways that you're going to be able to color this let's bring this back up now remember Click on the file, click save as. Never click on save, click save as. And when you click on save as, that will give you the, op the option to let you know exactly what you're gonna save it and exactly where you wanna save it at. Now I wanna save this image. Now right here you see Socialite PNG Line Shadow 002, that's 2400 by 3000. Now I'm going to click on this so it will give me the, the very same name. Now I'm going to click down here and I'm going to put the letter A beside it. I'm not going to make it like 003 or 04 because it's the same picture. It's just increased in size. But when I put the A beside it, that lets me know that there's something about that picture that I changed. And click save. Transparency will be lost. That's fine. Just click OK. And close the picture. And as you can see, I don't know why that does that sometimes, but the picture is good, it's okay. Okay, here's your picture. It's finished and it's increased in size. As you can see, if I move the cursor over it, let me go out of the folder and come back in, maybe that'll fix it. Probably it's not. Click, right click, copy, right click, paste. Okay. I don't know why that's looking like that, but anyway, let's click up here and I'm going to click delete. And I'm going to click on this, click it again, get rid of that word copy. Click out. There we are. Now let me move up here and see what size it is. 7200 by 9000 and it's only 420 kilobytes. So now this image is 
are 24 by 30, 300 percent at 7200 by 9000 pixels. So that's how you can increase the size and print it out at whatever size you want to, as long as the sizes are between 8 by 10 and 32 by 40, and keeping it at a 4 5 ratio. And please like, share, and subscribe. I'm hoping that this video helped you and hopefully everyone else that needs to see this. Here's my QR code, quick response code. Screenshot or take a picture, save it, use it, and or share it to get directly to my YouTube page. And last but certainly not least, thanks for watching.